ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have to participate in segregation right now. So those of you who are not people of color, I'm going to have to exclude you from participating in this particular exercise. Um, I'll explain and you'll understand in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, after going over that Mississippi document, you guys know the Mississippi, Miss, 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 Mississippi document I'm talking about, the one where page 181, where it specified, it specified the following. Let's, let's read it. Now, this is OCR'd. What do you mean by OCR'd? Well, it's an ocular reading, okay? So it's one of those things. I scanned it. Whew. Oh, this is, this is the second page. We got to go up one page. Sorry. We got to go right here. See, I didn't know this. And it's obvious that it should have happened. Now, some of the words are not here because, you know, but from the war up to the present time, I was with Mr. Myers. I said Miss Myers in 1875. We had been going through reconstruction or what could better be termed as Negro rule. <laughs> okay. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, we have a wonderful little windstorm that just came through. And I mean, it just rocked my place. I don't know where that junk came from. I apologize. I had to look outside and make sure there was no damage from that one because that one was pretty big. Uh, yeah, we get them all the time. That's how you guys get your tornadoes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you notice how the person who is scanning this in the archives, that skin color? Okay, thank you. All right, let me do y'all a favor so that y'all understand, because some of y'all I know, like those parents, just won't understand, because it's not possible. The Supreme Court in several cases, because there have been several people who have attempted to bring cases against the United States and against those corporations that are still existing today that made a whirlwind of profits, like J.P. Morgan, the Rockefellers, and all of them. And hold on now. When they brought their cases, the Supreme Court said something that, you know, obviously they didn't pay attention to. They said that they needed to prove that despite those companies still being in existence, that they were directly affected by their conduct. See, without that, you can't bring a claim because you have to show personal injury. Well, hold on now. I want you to understand. First, the Civil Rights Act of 1866. Many of you know that as deprivation of rights while acting under color and authority of law. That's where so-called Title 18, Section 241, 242, 247, 240. That's where that junk comes from. Okay? Civil Rights Act of 1866. Go read it. It's not a long read. That protects and secures your rights. Now, anyone... Now, I know we don't deal with civil. It's not civil. But don't worry about it. You're still bringing a claim under that act of Congress. Why? Because Adams, that idiot, that president, he, John Adams, I believe he was a mass murderer, so they had three names for him, John Quincy Adams. Anyway, Adams decided to veto the Civil Rights Act of 1866. Now, I want y'all to follow me on this so that y'all can understand what's going on, because Nobody does this. Nobody brings this up, and I've been bringing it up ever since. When he vetoed it, it went back to Congress, and Congress says, oh, no, uh-uh, get him out of the way. Get me back on that horse. And they overrode his veto. That's right. They rolled right over that veto. Super majority. See, normally Congress just needs a 66% vote. But no, they needed a super majority to veto the president's vote. So once you have that veto, any amendment to that act would take the same number of congressional members as it took to override the veto. Other than that, a lesser number has no authority because they overrode a presidential veto. When you over, pay attention, when you override a presidential veto, you now have two positions of authority, the administrative and the judicial. Why? Because they overwrote the presidential authority. So now they, by overriding it, they now assume the responsibility under law of the executive. Why? 
because they overrode the veto. That means they're now exercising authority on behalf of that entity. Whew. I know it's hard to understand, but you got to understand principles and got to stick to the principles because the principles are what matters. Yep, they run the school. What? No, the principles run the school. Just need to know. So the principles control everything. So you got to deal with principles of law. Okay. So because they overrode the presidential veto, there is no blah, 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 blah that can come in and say, well, we're amending the act. You can't amend the act, not unless you amend it with that supermajority. Because you just overrode a president, presidential veto. You can't come in and now amend it to correct things, to change things, because you don't have the authority to do so. Oh, snap. So the original Civil Rights Act of 1866, with the current understanding that you just heard me speak about. Now, that's, that's that right there. It's a lot of information I'm trying to give you at one time. So the next thing we have is you're not being personally affected. Of course you're personally affected. See, when they affected your grandparents and, you know, your ancestors not allowing them to work, not allowing them to own land, not allowing them to own property. Remember, this thing, Rahil, Rahil. We're going to go to the one that is not OCR, and that's this one. And, no, let's go to this one. This one is not AC, OCR, and it's the actual page. So let y'all see the page. Yeah, I, I, I copied it. Okay. From the war up until this time, I was with Mr. Myers in 1875. Now, I can see it a whole lot clearer now on my screen than on theirs. We had been going through the reconstruction, or what would be better term, Negro rule, or even better, black heels on white necks. Every office was filled by the northern carpetbagger. Yeah, they, they brought in them people from the north, the ones who love them niggers. Yeah, you heard me say it. And these newbies, they came into Noxaby and Lowndes counties, 19 or 90% Negroes who were voters who had no, ch we had no chance to defeat these carpet beggars the, because the carpet beggars were reelecting them nigger lovers in the office. So the Negroes realized their importance and were arrogant to the last degree. Yeah, what you mother's gonna do now, huh? Yeah, you ain't got control no more. See, that's what they would, okay, now hold on now. A white man dared not, what he dared not do? Uh, F with the black man? Yeah, I understand. Get into trouble with one of them. They had the courts all snap and the prosecuting attorney and Negro grand and put juries and the carpet beggar governor. All snap. They done had, they, they, the, 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 the tables turned and flipped and they done flipped the script. Ladies and gentlemen, right now, it's giving me some headaches, and I don't know why it's doing that. So we got to do that and then go back to doing this. Now, we're going to read the next paragraph because it's, it's important. The white people were desperate. They had been all these years mistreated, insulted, degraded, and humiliated. Is he a rapper? Anyway, let me make sure you all understand something. They were complaining about the same thing them Negroes were complaining about. Oh, snap, tables turn. Everybody reached what they sold. Well, you know what I'm saying. They're making the same complaint them Negroes. N niggers. N niggers, sorry. Uh, I can't even pronounce the word right. It's not my vocabulary. Anyway, they had been engaged all these years in a war and were determined to do or die. No man can appreciate the condition unless which the white people, or excuse me, under which the white people of the South groaned unless they were in the midst of it. Well, then that means you can't appreciate what the slaves were going through unless you were in the midst. Oh, that's right, you were in the midst of it. Okay, understand something. This is not about black or white. As I told you, I care less about race. What I care about is that the Supreme Court would sit up there and pretend that reparations and compensation is not due. So this is how you prove reparations and compensations are due. I'm gonna leave the script that I put together. You guys can put together your own lawsuit. You don't have to do it as, as this group. 
you can do it as your own group. However, the way you prove that you were affected is that your ancestors were denied their property, had their property stolen. And because they had their property stolen, that means you and your family had to struggle more. That means you were denied because your mother and father had to suffer through Jim Crow. See, remember, Jim Crow laws were illegal. There was nothing legal about Jim Crow laws. That's why they don't exist anymore, because they documented the fact that they were illegal. If they were illegal, then that's deprivation of rights acting under color and authority of law. Segregated schools, illegal. If you were affected by segregated schools or your parents were affected by segregated schools, that was illegal. That means you have a right to reparations because there was no constitutional amendment granting them the authority to ignore the law. You see, you don't have to go all the way back to the 1800s. You can go back to the recent history of slavery. You can go back to the recent history. You lost a family member due to the police raiding your home. You suffered from the police to the present day, targeting you because of your skin color. You don't have to prove it's because of your skin color. You use their history. You use the reports based on racism. You don't have to prove it. They have to disprove it. See, you're going to use history, people. And by the way, let me, when you go back and you read, you're going to hear me speak to the system and explain to it about history. You see, history doesn't require proof. History is the proof. You cannot unring a bell. History is the proof. You cannot go back and change history. They have tried. But because we have publications like this, because we have publications like this, any of you live in Mississippi, I want you to pay attention. The Ku Klux Klans, which were so necessary in those days, had cut many of these carpetbaggers. And to some extent, the Negroes were stubbed through, it doesn't say stabbed, it says stubbed or subdued. Sorry, see, the, the page just changed colors. So sorry about that. Subdued through those still voted for the carpetbaggers doggedly. See, they voted, ladies and gentlemen. They voted. They had the right to vote. Where where did they lose the right to vote? Over a period of years, they took it away. I'm not a voter. I wouldn't have voted back then. I won't vote now. I'm not a voter. I don't wish to vote. Don't want to vote. But hold on. But if that's my right, how can you take away something that I have the right to do? Well, they took away the right to vote. So if any of your ancestors and family members were deprived of the right to vote, that means you were deprived of your right to petition government for redress of grievance, the First Amendment right. The right to vote is the First Amendment right. That's your petitioning government for a redress of grievance. How do we know this? Go back and look at the declaration. It says that governments are constituted among men, and it shows how they can strip off those governments through the voting process. Pay attention. So when they denied your ancestors the right to vote they denied you the right to petition for redress of grievance which the law says congress can make no law prohibiting that's how you do this you use fundamental principles of law and you show how they did that now i want you to notice this phrase i'm going to say it need to pay attention to it the government of the united states the government of the united states you've all heard it before well, that's the official title for the United States Corporation, the government of the United States. Wait, hold on. Y'all don't believe me. Give me one second. I'll, I'll, I'll be right back, okay? I apologize for that. I want to show y'all where I'm getting it from. This is a folder we call One Stop. One Stop is Dunn and Bradstreet. Paid $5,000 for this information. We, we canceled our account because, sorry, got another one of those windstorms coming through again. Uh, let me tell you something. It is strong enough to move things and strong enough for me to look up and make sure ain't no more damage. So these are all the corporations that I needed. We got the First Circuit Court of Appeals, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, and Amazon, and you know, uh, then we have city of this and the county of this. And was that Kern County? That was Kern County here in California. Yeah, it's basically all the counties that they put me through when I was going through my vacation. Uh, judicial court. Now, we want the United States. So we need the government of the United States. Judicial, judicial, supreme. The House of Representatives don't care about them right now. We got YouTube, Postal Service, Judiciary, Supreme Court, Supreme Court, United States. 
I don't want Supreme Court. I want the United States. Where? You? Give me one second while I find that United States one. Okay. It'll be just one second. It's it, you know, because it likes to play games. So let's do that. We, let me pause y'all because it may take a minute. It didn't take that long at all. Let me show y'all. Y'all going to love this. Okay? One-stop report. Government of the United States. Government of the United States. We're going to go with this one because this one is bigger. This one is got more to it. One was done in 22. This was done in 24. We're going to go with this one. The one that's bigger. That's got more to it. That got more meat and something. That, 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 this, 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 this. See, the official title, Government of the United States. Okay, that's the official title for the United States. Wait, hold on. Company summary, company description, site contacts, corporate family, list everything. The House of Representatives, everybody, your state, everything is under that. Washington, District of Columbia, United States, go dial that number and see what you get. You're going to get their headquarters. It's the parent company. It's a company, 1600. Pennsylvania Avenue, Northwest, Washington, D.C. Go see what address that pulls up. How many corporations do they have underneath them? 59,506. That's what they mean by corporate government. Okay. It says that it has $150 billion in assets, and we know it has more than that. All right. Now, hold on. The U.S. government is headed by the president along with the vice president, is elected to a four-year term. This is the government. So I want you to understand something. This organization has no sovereign immunity. It is not the government. See, what you guys don't understand is the United States of America was never supposed to have a government over the people. It was supposed to have representatives who helped facilitate things and they formed what we refer to as the government. But the government was never supposed to exercise authority over the people. Go back and read. The people were supposed to be governed by self-governance. And should they harm or violate another, then that other group was empowered to exercise authority over you. Because you then violated common law. Don't believe me? Go back and read the history, people. All right, let's continue. It doesn't mean you get to do whatever you want. Lord have mercy. Don't think that. That's how you get in trouble, by thinking uh, stupid, stupid things. Now, sometimes you'll see that they'll use this as the United States EIN number. This is not an EIN number. for This is their dunce number. 16-1906-193 is not the United States EIN number. All right. But remember, this is the government of the United States. The government of the United States. Now look at all the other states. This is Boston. This is Maine. That's Providence, Rhode Island. Look at all these states that are associated with it. Okay, and look at all of this chief executive officer, Medicaid branch. And then look at this. These are the contacts. I promise you they will not call you back. I promise you they won't have this conversation. But that's how in-depth this is, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? And that's the secret. So, let's get back to this. What we do have is that this corporation was around when Jim Crow was going. And if it wasn't, the corporation that existed before that, which is District of Columbia. District of Columbia is a corporation. So now that we know this, pay attention, because it's very important. You sue the corporation for its past acts. You sue the complacency. They're complacent in the things that were done. They don't get to escape that. Those are facts. That's what you're doing. You want your reparations? You want to bring your lawsuit? Then you have to associate the ones who are liable. And because the government sanctioned Jim Crow, illegally because the Constitution didn't allow it, because the government sanctioned, whether it be state or federal, slavery, 
it's illegal because the Constitution didn't allow it. Because the government's denied your ancestors the right to petition for redress agreements. They denied them due process. You guys seen all that civil rights movement? Just use all of that as your evidence that the government participated in this. State governments as well. Hold the state governments liable. Now, hold on. I'm doing something different, y'all. I am doing something different. I am asking for reparations, compensations, and penalties. Now, when they give compensations, I'm asking for a whole new currency to be created. $28 trillion max. Let the currency be backed by the lands, meaning the property owned by the state governments and the property owned by the federal government. The government doesn't need to own any land. And let the currency be backed by the land and its value. And that they are required by this new law that will be created to maintain the properties. National parks maintain it. They have to maintain it, keep it pristine, and they don't get to siphon any of the money from the monies going to the families of those displaced individuals who were treated as slaves. See, first of all, they called you African Americans, and you guys don't get it. You cannot be from Africa and America at the same time. Hold on now. But you cannot be an African American. You can only be an American. Stop calling yourselves U.S. citizens. Stop calling yourself state citizens. Just call yourself an American. An American is a state citizen. Hold on now. Don't you understand that? An American is a state citizen. Now, when I say citizen, I'm not meaning subject. I'm meaning civilian. You got to understand me when I speak. And that's why I got a caveat and explain it to you. So stop being an argument. The Supreme Court, we're going to do this one last time, then I'm going to let y'all go because this is too much of y'all time right now. We, we, we moving some files, y'all. Moving a whole lot of files. If y'all if y'all knew how many files we moving, we just moving them. Give me one second. Wake up. Wake up. Slaughterhouse cases, comma, federal citizen. Stop listening. Sorry, I just have to turn it off because he's being stupid now. The legislative chartered a private corporation. We don't want this right here. This is Wikipedia. I want the actual what the Supreme Court said. Let's go to the Supreme Court at Justia, the site that worships a false god. That is the name of a false god, ladies and gentlemen. A pagan god. The privileges and immunities clauses of the 14th Amendment is limited to federal citizenship rather than extending state citizenship. So let's do this a favor. Um, passed an act granting to corporations created by it. So it says the legislature of Louisiana on the 8th of March, 1869, passed an act granting to a, a corporation created by it the exclusive rights for 25 years to have and maintain slaughterhouses. Now, I want y'all to understand something, because a lot of y'all not going to get this slaughterhouse thing. Okay? I want y'all to understand something. That's why it's called slaughterhouse, because it was granted exclusive rights over all slaughterhouse throughout the state of New Louisiana. But I want y'all to pay attention to what they just said. They were granting exclusive rights to a single corporation. That's illegal. But hold on now. To sell and slaughter within the parishes of New Orleans, Jefferson, and Bernard, St. Bernard Parish, anyway, in that state, 
a territory, because remember, it's a territory. Shh. It's a territory. Which it was said. Okay, it's a territory. I want to read more. You gonna let me read more, just 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 dear. Okay, now hold on now. Contained 1,154 square miles, including the city of New Orleans, and a population between two and 300,000 people, and prohibited all other persons from building, keeping, or having slaughterhouses, landings of, for cattle. Get out of here. Nobody wants you. Landings for cattle and yards for cattle intended for sale or slaughter within these limits. And requiring that all cattle and other animals intended for sale or slaughter within that district should be brought to the yards and slaughterhouses of the corporation and authorizing the corporation to exact certain prescribed fees for the use of their worlds. I don't know. It just means their warehouses and their land. Okay, let's get this word right here. Yeah, I want you to translate. Why do you think? Okay. Oh, no, you ain't supposed to be. I, I said translate. What you translating to? It's. I'm sorry. This is a Vietnamese, um, <laughs> Vietnamese browser. And so, of course, it will translate it in Vietnamese. Okay. Hold on. Um, let's do, where at Google at? Search Google. Sorry, I'm tired. I just got my, my omelet this morning, and I enjoyed my omelet. Yeah, I ain't got no bird flu, because ain't heard nothing about no bird flu in weeks, huh? The level quarryside area in which a ship may be moored to load and unload. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. It's wharfs. Okay, that ain't wharfs. Anyway, basically because of the Mississippi River and the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Since they got a lot of ships and they ship out a lot of things, and if y'all gonna use any of that, nope, uh-uh, you're in this county. You gotta sit up here and go through us. So they covered everything, make sure that nobody could slaughter anything anywhere in that state but except through them. Ooh, wait, and if you were going to slaughter any place else, that means you would have had to travel a while. Oh, Lord. You see how they were playing? So there you go. All right. Getting back to the lawsuit. Ladies and gentlemen, it's here. This is just a template. You can start from here. I do the conversation where I'm talking about everything, and at the very end, we put the maxims of law and the Supreme Court case citations and statutes at large. Okay, now I did go through it several times. Like I said, they didn't have the right to take away anybody's voting rights, but they did. They didn't have the right to segregate, prevent you from using or doing business or contracting. When you walk into someone's convenience store to buy something, that is your right to contract. If they allow Johnny to contract, then they must allow you to contract, and they cannot discriminate based on the color of skin. That's illegal. The Constitution never granted them that authority, and the fact that they did it and the United States condoned it makes the United States liable because they were acting under color and authority of law. Why? Because they enacted these stupid Jim Crow laws. These Jim Crow laws was done for one reason, one reason only, and that was to segregate against the people of color. So that's your premise. You go after the United States and these states for sanctioning and authorizing Jim Crow law, slavery, uh, segregation, and so forth. You go after the states and you go after the United States, the so-called government of the United States. The government of the United States, not the United States government. So you change every time it says United States government, you change that to the government of the United States. That's the name of the corporation. Violation of secured right asserts that they violated the rights of 1866. Then uh, ancestors were subject to slavery, segregation, disenfranchisement, and other forms of discrimination solely based on their race and violation of the constitutionally secured right. Okay, so let's get back to, we got one more thing, then I'll let y'all go. We got to go back to slaughter. Okay, we were at slaughter and now we left slaughter. So let's get back to slaughter for each animal land at certain fees. Okay. Now, let's do this. We're going to do a word search. 
Control F, then we go citizen. C I T I Z E N. Wait a minute. Oh, we got to go with the opinion, not the uh, syllabus. Ooh -wee. There's an R there. Now we're going to do federal citizenship because it says, now this one to highlight privileges and immunity clause. No, we're talking about the whole first section of the 14th Amendment. F E D E R A L. Aha, I separated you, mother. Okay, it only says it's here once. So let's read Mo. Like other state and cities across the country, Louisiana passed laws that restricted slaughterhouse operations in New Orleans to a single central corporation. This measure was deemed necessary, blah, 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 blah. And so they got sued. Not yet ready to extend due process, pay attention, for procedural and substantive grounds, Miller limited the scope of the Privileges and Immunities Clause. Really? Hold on now. Opinions. Okay. Citizens of the United States and citizens of the state where they reside to support the dual notion of citizenship. Any rights guaranteed by the Privileges and Immunities Clause were limited to areas controlled by the federal government, such as areas of ports and waterways, and the right to run for federal office, and certain rights affecting safety of the seas. As these examples made clear, the range of these rights were extremely narrow and unlikely relevant in most situations. Citizens are criticizing the majority for essential... Okay, so this is not the actual opinion. I want the opinion of the court. Let's do this right here. The legislature, Louisiana. Okay, now I want to get to the citizen part. So give me one second. Let me pause y'all because this is the actual opinion. This is the reason why the slaughterhouse cases are applicable to you. It was the same paragraph that I stopped on. Such powers is not forbidden by the 13th article of the amendment. Pay attention the 13th article of amendment, that's what you need to understand the constitution is articles. Shh, don't tell anybody. Or by the first section of the 14th article. They're not amendments, ladies and gentlemen, they're articles of the constitution. They just changed the name to amendments later so that Congress could rewrite the articles. Shh, don't tell nobody. I've told you guys that before. An examination of the history of the clauses which have led to the adoption of those amendments and of the amendments themselves demonstrate that the main purpose of all three, of all the three last amendments was the freedom of the African race. African race? Do you know how many races are in Africa? Anyway, the security and perpetuation or perpetuation of that freedom. Well, then how come they didn't have the perpetual freedom and their protection from the oppression of white men who had formerly held them in slavery. Jim Crow laws, anyone? Separate but equal, anyone? Separate water fountains, anyone? Riots in 1964, anyone? The Watts riots, anyone? Yes, Supreme Court had ruled that they were supposed to be free from that. So now you can hold them accountable. In giving construction to any of these, those articles, it was necessary to keep this main purpose steadily in view. Though the latter, the letter and the spirit of these articles must apply to all cases coming within their preview, whether the party is concerned of being African descent or not. See, now they're, they're limiting it. Now they're saying African descent. Okay. Opinions and descent. I don't want opinions and descent. I want errors of the Supreme Court of Louisiana. I don't want that. I want the actual case. So I can't use this because they're giving me opinions. I don't want opinions, opinions. I want the Supreme Court opinions. But I do like the fact that they understand the Constitution. 
And now we have a Supreme Court that purportedly understands the Constitution. Purportedly. So give me a second. Let's get back to Slaughterhouse. Let's see. Is this one? Slaughterhouse cases. Okay. Let's see. Why would constitutionalcenter.org? We don't want that. I don't want Iowa. I don't want questions. I don't want 13th. I don't want none of this stuff. I want actual law uh, website that's supposed to know the law. All right. Nationalconstitutionalcenter.org. Nope. Just yeah. We just went there. Don't want them. Don't want that one. Congress.gov. All right, all persons born and naturalized in the United States are subject to the jurisdiction thereof. Now, you have to be born and naturalized in the United States to be a subject. See, subject. That's why you don't submit things to the court and you don't subject yourself to their jurisdiction. It says, are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges and immunities of citizens of the United States. Excuse me? So they're saying no state can abridge any immunities of a person who is a citizen of the United States. Well, guess what? A citizen of the United States is a federal citizen, a United States citizen. They just told you right there. It's right there in the act. That's why the Supreme Court came to that conclusion. I've never read it this way until now, until reading the Slaughterhouse case to understand where the Supreme Court was coming from. It says, it tells you about the United States citizen and the citizen wherein, uh, the state and wherein the citizen resides. Then it says, no state. Now, mean, mind you, it just spoke about United States citizens. No state shall make or enforce a law which would abridge the privileges and immunities of citizens of the United States because they are not state citizens. They're United States citizens. They're not state property. Now remember, it says citizens of the United States or the state wherein they reside. But it says if you abridge their rights, the only way they can complain is if they are a United States citizen. Now, the Supreme Court, let's see what they really say it because Congress ain't going any further. Where's the slaughterhouse cases? Oh, okay. In the Slaughterhouse cases, the court elevated the Louisiana statute, evaluated, excuse me, the Louisiana statute that conferred a monopoly upon a single corporation to engage in business of slaughterhouse cattle. In determining whether the statute abridged the privileges of other butchers, the privileges, <laughs> and the court frustrated the aims of the most aggressive sponsors of the Privileges and Immunity Clause. According to the court, these sponsors had sought to centralize in the hands of the federal government large powers. It's hitherto exercised by the state by converting the rights of the citizen of each state at the time of the adoption of the 14th Amendment into protected privileges and immunities of the United States citizens. The interpretation would have allowed businesses to develop unimpeded by state interference by limiting state laws abridging these privileges. According to the court, however, such an interpretation would have transferred the security and protections of all civil rights to the federal government to bring within the powers of Congress to the entire domain of civil rights heretofore belonging exclusively to the states and would constitute this court as a perpetual censor upon all legislation of the United States on the civil rights of their own citizens with authority to nullify such as it did not approve as consistent with those rights as they existed at the time of the adoption of the amendment to the effect so great was the departure from the structure of the spirit of the institutions is to feather and degrade the state government by subjecting it to the control of Congress, blah, 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 blah. So this is not the slaughterhouse case. This is somebody giving their opinion. This is not Congress giving their opinion. 
even though this is supposed to be constitution the congress no no this is run by the legislative uh, not the legislative the revised whoever those fools are revisionary council okay that's run by the revisionary council that's not run by congress so i'm looking but i can't find it dude okay but i'm looking let's see one second Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back. I went and took a look at something, and I want I want you all to take a look at it, too. We're going to come back here, and what we're looking for is the very first point that the Supreme Court made. The first clause of the 14th article, which is the 14th Amendment that they're referring to, was primarily intended to confer, pay attention, citizenship on the Negro race. Sorry. You are not United States citizens. It conferred citizenship on you. This is a grant, a privilege. This is not a right. That's what they're letting you know. Second, to give definition as to what citizenship of the United States and citizenship of the state was, and to recognize the distinction between citizenship of the state and citizenship of the United States by those definitions. You see, they define what a citizen of the United States is. It's not one by birth. No, they said whoever by birth, but it's not one by birth. They have to confer that upon you. Don't take my word for it. Go back and read the case yourself. Now, the second protects from the hostile legislation of the states, the privileges and immunities of these so-called citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have privileges or immunities. Don't want them. I don't even have benefits. Okay, I have rights. Rights supersede privileges and immunities. Okay? So, there you go. By the way, pay attention. These latter, as defined by Justice Washington in Clarfield and Coriel, and by the court in Ward versus Maryland, embraced generally those fundamental civil rights for the security and establishment which organized society is instituted. So, hey, Garrett, you have those rights. They're automatic when you create a society. And they remain and will, with certain exceptions mentioned in the federal so-called constitution, under the care of the state governments. And of this class are those set up by the plaintiffs. All right. So the privilege and immunity clause of the United States are those which arise out of the nature and essential character of the national government. Yeah, the privileges and immunities, because the government created it, people. The provision of its constitution or its laws and treaties made in pursuance thereof. Pay attention, the constitution doesn't give you rights. Go back and read it. And look at any rights given by the Constitution. The Constitution doesn't give you rights. It gives you benefits, privileges, and immunities for participating. The Constitution cannot give you a right. They don't have the right to do so. If you don't believe me, all you got to do is go take a look. All right? Now, notice what it says, and these which are placed under the protection of Congress by this clause, the 13th Amendment. Sorry. Let's do this. We, we have to do this real quick so that you guys can get educated. Watch this. Wake up. The Northwest Ordinance hyphen habeas corpus. Stop listening. When you guys get a chance, go look at the Northwest Ordinance. Go look at the habeas corpus section of the Northwest Ordinance. Northwest Ordinance of 1787, not 1789, passed by Congress under the Articles of the Confederation, guaranteed the right to habeas corpus to the inhabitants of the Northwest Territory, not just the Northwest Territory, all the United States. Okay? The Northwest Territory included all of these states because it didn't just include that. Now, mind you, trial by jury, religious freedom, all that was included in the Northwest Ordinance. Okay? Judicial proceedings based on common law, I'm not just saying it. That was your common law. It wasn't those stupid courts. 
the inhabitants of said territory shall always be entitled to the benefit of writ of habeas corpus and of a trial by jury in a habeas corpus. Shh, don't tell nobody. And a proportionate representation of the people in the legislature and of judicial proceedings according to the course of common law. So where did they go wrong? Where did they strip you of that? Okay, now hold on now. We got one more thing I need to show y'all because y'all, that's just habeas corpus. Watch this. Wake up. Involuntary servitude. Stop listening. TikTok, Northwest Ordinance of 1787 prohibited slavery and involuntary servitude, not just in the Northwest Territories, but permanently. It was not permitted in the United States, except as punishment for crimes. That is the 13th Amendment. Go ahead, pay attention to the words. There shall neither be slavery nor involuntary servitude in said territory, otherwise than as punishment for crimes whereof a party shall have been duly convicted. Ladies and gentlemen, understand they were all territories. None of them were states. Even though they were called the United States, none of them were states. They were all territories. Yay. Okay. They were all of them territories. Now, earlier versions of the ordinances also aimed to gradually end slavery in the territories. In 18 or 1784, versions to support Thomas Jefferson and other influential members of Congress who hoped that slavery would fade away as the country grew and settlers moved west. That's a lie. Do not do not believe that. Please don't believe that. Okay, that's why Thomas Jefferson continued to own slaves. If he was trying to get rid of slavery, then he would not have had any. I'm sorry, it's just the truth. The Northwest Ordinance also established a government for the territories, including a territorial governor. Now, not just a territorial governor, but Secretary of State and a three-judge court. Once the population reached 5,000, they could get uh, put into the Congress, General Assembly, which would include a legislative council, House of Representatives. The ordinance also included other provisions, like the right to habeas corpus, trial by jury, and proportionate representation in a legislature. That's where that comes from in the Constitution. If you read the Northwest Ordinance, it shows you that all, pay attention, all of the member states had to abide by the Northwest Ordinance and all of their constitutions had to mirror the United States Constitution. I didn't say it, go back and read it. It's called the Northwest Ordinance. It wasn't just for the territories of the Northwest. It included all of the other territories that were incorporated into that territory. You got to love it. If only people knew. Okay. Now, with that being said, it's time to let y'all go. Just wanted to bring y'all this information. Now, I did go back while I had y'all on pause, and I did redo this and add some other things. That's why it's still going right now, okay? Because I told it I didn't like the stupidity that it was doing because it always tries to make things lighter. So I had to go back in and I had to put in the information coming directly from the Supreme Court when they highlighted what they highlighted. The 14th Amendment only applies to federal citizenship. I didn't say it, okay? Uh, where is that first section again so that you guys can see it for yourself? The first clause of the 14th Amendment created, create it, create it. Okay, was primarily intended to confer citizenship to this Negro race. There was no such thing as a Negro race. Go and look and see if you can find something known as a Negro race. They created the Negro. Okay. The second clause, they were born in America. Born in the U.S. Anyway, the second clause protects from the hostile legislation of states the privileges and immunities of citizens of the United States, federal employees. Hey, I didn't say it. They said it. They said that the 14th Amendment applies to federal citizens. The Negro is a federal citizen. You want to talk about identity? I don't identify as a, as a Negro. 
yeah, I'm, I'm sometimes called black or colored or nigger or, you know, or nigger. I'm sometimes called all kinds of things, but I Negro? Nope, not Negro. Nope, because I don't, I don't identify. Okay, you talk about pluralities. All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all have a good day.